the fall before my older daughter's graduation, we decided for that fall break that we were going to take a family vacation. It'd be kind of our last uh, gasp as a full family to come together for vacation. And so we decided we were going to go to Florida. Now, Grace and I wanted to go to the beach. Kay and Anna wanted to go to Disney World, and so we compromised and we drove over to Cocoa Beach and then to Universal and to Disney World and had a great vacation. I remember in particular though on the drive down, because we were having to drive through Georgia on some back roads to get over to Cocoa Beach, and I remember all of us at some point looking up and going, are we there yet? Seems like we've been driving forever, and we never seem to reach the destination. Now, in the life of faith, we too are on a journey. And sometimes it feels like we never reach the destination as well, that we are uh, always kind of looking around and going, are we yet there yet? Have we arrived? And some people, some faith traditions want to say, yes, you have. You've gotten here. In the United Methodist tradition, though, we believe that we are people of the journey. We are moving on towards a goal, but we maybe haven't gotten there yet. So today we're going to talk about that journey, what that means for the life of faith, and how we understand our lives as United Methodists. I'm Jay Voorhees. I'm the pastor of the City Road Chapel United Methodist Church. This is Prime Worship, and the Lord be with you. This is Prime, the online service of prayer and praise for and from the City Road Chapel United Methodist Church, located in Madison, Tennessee. This service is for September the 13th, 2020, during the season of Ordinary Time. Let us pray together. Almighty God, just as you called fishermen and tax collectors to journey with you, you likewise call us to follow your path. Help us to be the disciples you have called us to be. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The deep thunder clouds form, and dark is God's path on the wings of the storm. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor thy be to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end. Our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. Our act of praise today comes from Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out with weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Praise God from Praise Him, all creatures. 
lives here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Welcome to City Road Chapel a church in the United Methodist tradition located in Madison, Tennessee. For over 170 years, people have gathered in this area to worship, study, and serve their neighbors. We are deeply rooted in this community and are committed to proclaiming God's love to all of our neighbors, no matter their background or situation. During the COVID outbreak, we have suspended in-person worship to keep everyone safe. Our ministry in Madison includes caring for children and assisting families through our Child Development Center and offering help to the impoverished through a variety of ministries. We believe that we are called to both grow in our love of God and to love our neighbors as Christ loved us. Our ministry is dependent on the generosity of our members and the community. If you would like to make a donation to the work of City Road Chapel, please visit our website at cityroadchapel.org slash give. All donations are tax deductible. We hope and pray that you find meaning in today's service, and we hope that you will continue to join us online or join us at our Sunday worship service very soon. Our scripture reading for today is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 8 through 16. I consider everything a loss in comparison to the superior value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I've lost everything for him, but what I lost I think of as sewer trash, so that I might gain Christ and be found in him. In Christ I have a righteousness that is not my own. And that does not come from the law, but rather from the faithfulness of Christ. It is the righteousness of God that is based on faith. The righteousness that I have comes from knowing Christ, the power of his resurrection, and the participation in his sufferings. It includes being conformed to his death, so that I may perhaps reach the goal of the resurrection of the dead. It's not that I have already reached this goal or have already been perfected, but I pursue it so that I may grab hold of it because Christ grabbed a hold of me for just this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. So all of us who are spiritually mature should think this way. And if anyone thinks differently, God will reveal it to him or her. Only let's live in a way that is consistent with whatever level we have reached. As you reflect on this passage, consider the following questions. What has your journey with Christ forced you to leave behind? How do you think Christ has grabbed you for his purpose? What is the prize you are striving for? So today we're going to be talking about United Methodists as people of the journey, and I need to begin by sort of sharing a little bit of my context of how I approach this. So when I was 14 years old, I found myself walking down the aisle of a Baptist church where the preacher had told me to come and receive Jesus as my Savior, and I walked down the aisle and I said a prayer, and I was saved. I, the preacher said so, it seemed like the Bible said so, and I knew that I was saved, I had been forgiven of my sins, and all was good. And then they encouraged me to be baptized, which I was, and then there was this kind of lack of what to do next. I mean, there was a lot of talk about 
reading the Bible and praying and those kinds of things in terms of living our lives, but there wasn't really a purpose to it because we'd already been saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. There, it was just done. We were we were kind of done. In a sense, walking the aisle was the ending point for us, and then we were just kind of twiddling our thumbs until we all get to heaven at the end of time. Uh, there didn't seem a lot of purpose uh, to the Christian life once one was saved. I contrast that with my experience in the Methodist Church. Because in the Methodist Church, while we believe that asking Jesus into our heart, uh, receiving Jesus as our Savior is important, we don't see that as the end point. We see that as the beginning point of a journey that will continue on throughout the rest of our lives and maybe even into eternity. You see, we believe, or John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, believed, and we follow in his footsteps, that we are on this uh, path with Jesus to ultimately grow in what Wesley called per Christian perfection, but what is better probably understood as the ability to love in the same way that God loved us. And so our lives are really um, focused around carrying out or being on the road with Jesus, always moving forward in our faith. And I think one of the best ways to fully understand how this works is to look at what Wesley called his way of salvation. So this way of salvation, of course, is not Wesley's. It's how Wesley described God's work in the world. He called it the via salutis, the way of salvation. And so if you look at this chart with me, it begins with our creation in the image of God, that we are created with God, God's image in us, uh, which makes us people of sacred worth, that God is uh, deeply integrated into who we are. But then sin comes into the world, and Wesley would talk about the fall, and the fall is this place where sin becomes a reality, where we try to live life on our own, and what Wesley would describe it. He, some traditions want to say that in the fall, the image of God was removed from us. Wesley didn't believe that. Wesley believed that it was deformed or distorted, that it was never fully removed from us, but that it was done in a way that we just couldn't recognize God within us. And so we go on in life until the point where we are convicted of our sins and begin to repent and say we want to live in a different way. And it's at that point that justification happens, where uh, Wesley would talk about it in terms of new birth or regeneration. He really believed that it was kind of the starting point of the transformation of our lives. Now again, as you look at this chart, recognize that grace is permeated throughout this entire way. This is nothing that's done through our own efforts. This is done through the grace of God. And we continue to hold out that God's grace is at work, um, both before we're aware of it and even as we move into the later stages. So on the chart, you'll see there um, how we are justified. And he would say that our sanctification begins at that point. But some other traditions want to say, well, that's, that's it. You're made holy. You're made sanctified. You are, at that point, you've kind of reached the penultimate goal. Wesley didn't believe that. Wesley believed that that started this journey towards moving on to what he called Christian perfection. Now, that phrase sometimes is difficult for folks because they, as there's a tendency to think that Christian perfection is like, I, I'm keeping a list of rules or I'm super holy. Christian perfection, as Wesley understood, he talked about perfection in love. And what he meant by that was the ability to love as God loves us that we are moving on in this journey to be able to claim the God that is in us and love in the way that God has loved us th since the beginning of time. Now, as you look at the chart, you'll notice that squiggly line there. That's the journey we're on. Because like all journeys, sometimes there are times when you're moving forward, but sometimes you run into a detour and you move backwards. Sometimes in our lives we're going along and we're growing in our love and then somebody does something that makes us angry and our love fails and we go backwards a few steps. We are on a journey that is not a straight line, 
It's a wavy line because the roads go in different ways as we go through our lives. We're on this goal to be perfected in love, but it's still a journey and we're still working towards it. And that's part of the purpose of our life is to be able to love in the way that God loves us. What Wesley would call entire sanctification or glorification or perfection. See, we're on this road and hopefully we are moving forward to become more like who God created us to be in the first place. Several years back, I had the opportunity to really begin to think about this in a different way when I was invited to go to the Holy Lands with a group of United Methodist pastors. A developer in Atlanta felt like pastors needed to experience the Holy Land. And on the way, as we were preparing to go, uh, the folks that were leading the trip really introduced us to the idea of pilgrimage, this uh, sort of traditional journey to find the holy or to go to a sacred spot, space to find something significant, to, to find the presence of God. And so we flew over to Israel and we got to walk where Jesus walked and, and see various holy sites and uh, eventually end up in the place where Jesus was resurrected. And certainly, arriving at the destination was important, and it was significant in my life. But what I also learned is that uh, sometimes what's as important in a pilgrimage is not reaching the final destination, but what we learn along the way, how we grow along the way, how it changes us and forms us. I'm reminded of a movie. If you've never gotten a chance to see it, I want to encourage you. It was with Martin Sheen called The Way. And the idea of this movie is that Martin Sheen goes on a pilgrimage um, to go to a special site and walk along the Camino de Santiago uh, to be able to um, carry out a pilgrimage for his son. And his goal is to reach the final destination. But along the way, he meets other people that help change him and transform him and make him what he's supposed to be. You see, reaching the destination is important, but how we get there is important too. Who we meet along the way, who helps us to be changed, who helps us to experience the presence of God. And our understanding of the life of faith is, yes, the destination, where we end up, yeah, I get it, it's significant, but it's also significant how we get there and the way we get there, and the pathway we take, and the people we meet. Because it's those things that are gonna, gonna inform how we fully understand God. So we're on a pilgrimage. And ultimately, a pilgrimage is working towards a particular destination. Now, for a number of traditions, that destination is heaven, right? We're working our way to get into heaven. And for a lot of faith traditions, faith is about getting into heaven, avoiding hell, uh, sometimes what we call fire insurance. But in our tradition, heaven is important. I'm not wanting to minimize heaven, but heaven is only one of the destinations we're working toward. We're working really towards being able to be perfected in love, to love in the way that God loves us. And there's an image that I often use with children to try to help them understand what this means. So I have them form a circle around me and hold hands. And I'll stand in the center and I'll say, okay, just imagine if you would that I'm God. And I tell them, you're going to have to imagine really hard for, to think about me as God. But imagine that I'm God. And I, I tell them, it's now, I want you to get as close to God as you can. I want you to love God as much as you can. So, so get as close and as tight and as merged with God as you can. And so, of course, they all move towards the center. And as they do, they get closer together. Then I tell them to back out. And I said, okay, now I want you to practice your love of your neighbors on either side. So I want you to get as close to your neighbor as you possibly can. Of course, what happens, they all move inward to get closer to one another. And what happens, they get closer to God. I believe that that point where love of neighbor and love of God merges is what we would call Christian perfection. It's loving in the way that God loves us. And that's the destination. That's where we're headed. We are trying to grow and be perfected in our love of God and love of neighbor. And if we are on this journey together, we are helping one another to reach that goal. We all have 
different places in the journey. Some of us have, have, have a lot of years on the road, others of us not so much. But we're working together to be able to fully grow in the love and the grace of God. Now next week we're going to talk about uh, a different thing in the Methodist Church. We're going to talk about what it means to be people of connection because the United Methodist Church is structured in a different way than other churches. We're a connectional organization. And I believe that has some things to say to our world, particularly in a time when we live in a world that is really individualistically focused. So I hope you'll come back next week. May the blessings of our Lord be with you all. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion. The beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. But children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King, may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high, to fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. So it's time to wrap up today's service, and I want to thank you all for being with us this week on Prime Worship. We just had the honor of remembering Millie Grammer's life here in the sanctuary, and uh, I, it was well attended. I want to thank everyone that helped us to make that service happen here at the church, and, and it went really well, so thank you all. Uh, some of you all are going to ask about, well, since we've had the funeral, uh, should we have worship again? And it's coming soon, I, I promise. I, I really believe that the mayor is going to move things back to phase three, uh, probably in the middle of October. So just a few more weeks online, and then we'll get back together. But the good thing about today was that we were able to really prove that we can do this and make this work. We'll probably still meet in the gym when we come back together, uh, although given the air conditioning in there, we'll have to see. So anyway, I hope that you all have a great week. I really don't have any other announcements today. Uh, and so now if you would just take a moment to run through the prayer requests as they scroll by on the screen. Let us pray. Loving God, you have called us to a journey. And as we walk with you, you guide our steps, laying out the path before us. Your grace in leading us on the road is immense. 
and even when we stray from the path, you find us and bring us to the place where we should be. For your guidance, we give you praise. There are others, friends and family and neighbors, who are having difficulty on the road. They have encountered detours and potholes, other situations in life that make the journey hard. Be with them, O Lord, and help them on the way, bathed in your love and comfort. And Lord, our nation and the world struggle to determine the path we should follow. And we are in a season of deciding who should lead us. Help us to never forget that you are the Good Shepherd who guides our way and gives us direction. May any decision we make about human leadership reflect the values that you would use in leading us. Jesus, we bring all these petitions before you, remembering that you took the form of a servant, humbling yourself to the point of death so that all the world might be redeemed and light would shine in the darkness. It's in your honor that we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God.